Welcome to The Hangar. My name is Jim Jones and today we're going to take a look at repairing a leaky exhaust valve on this Warner seven-cylinder radial engine. One of the challenges that we're going to have today is to repair that valve while it's still on the engine without pulling the cylinder. Whenever we have a cylinder that's a little soft or has low compression, the first thing we have to determine is where it's leaking. Is it leaking at the intake valve? Is it leaking at the exhaust valve? Is it leaking around the rings of the piston? Or worst case scenario, is it leaking through a crack in the head? That would be bad news. Well, before we take a look at how we determine where that leak is, let's go back to the workbench and take a look at the challenge that we have in repairing this uh, valve while it's still in the engine. As I said, the biggest challenge we have is repairing this leaky exhaust valve without taking it out of the cylinder. As you know, a, a valve has to come down into the seat to shut off the flow of air so we get good compression. Well, typically to repair an exhaust valve or any valve that's leaking like this, we would pull the cylinder off of the engine and repair the valve from the inside. In other words, we would push down on the valve and, and grind it with a valve grinding compound and grind the seat and the valve so they made up and make good contact. Well, we're doing it from the outside of the engine. And so in order to do that, we need to be able to pull the valve up against the seat with valve grinding compound on it and twist it. Uh, the biggest challenge there, of course, is to not let the valve fall down into the cylinder because that would be a bad thing. So I'll show you how we're going to accomplish this. I've made this nifty little tool out of a piece of a broom handle and I drilled into that a hole 3 8 inch diameter. Then I glued into that hole a section or a piece of dowel rod, 3 8 inch dowel rod, and over that then I put a piece of uh, 3 8 inch ID plastic tubing, uh, along with some wire around it, uh, safety wire around it, to make sure we have good contact and so the tubing won't slip on the dowel rod. So why 3 8 inch? Because that's the diameter of the valve stem. So now I put the valve stem into the tubing, or slide the tubing down over the, over the valve stem, with a little safety wire here to keep it from coming off. Now I can pull up and grind on the valve at the same time. So let's go do the repair. Before we take a look at how we discovered the, uh, where the leak was in this number three cylinder, let's compare a good cylinder compression with the bad cylinder compression. Hopefully you'll be able to hear the difference. One more time. Once we found which cylinder was soft or had the low compression, the next goal is to figure out where the leak is. Now I already had the exhaust system off of here. It was quite obvious to me that because I could hear it hissing at least through the exhaust port or that area. The next question is, is it leaking at the valve or is there a crack in the head? Well, I spent quite a bit of time with a magnifying glass and a dental pick and I'm just looking all around that area. around the valve. Now I'm going to show you a really slick way to determine where it's leaking around that valve. Once I determined that the uh, leak is in the exhaust area, uh, we've of course looked at it and saw that there were no cracks in the head, so it must be around the valve. To confirm that, uh, we can put a little baby powder in here, and this baby powder will not only uh, tell us that it's the valve, but show us where around the valve it's actually leaking. So we'll drop some of this baby powder in here. And of course it gets just about everywhere else. And now we're ready to uh, put some compression onto this uh, valve and let it leak and it will show us exactly where the leak is. What's going to happen now is when I 
pull the prop through and put compression in the cylinder, that baby powder is just going to boil in there like and it's, and it's uh, going to become cloudy. But I'm going to do it several times and it'll blow that away and then we'll be able to see the lines in the baby powder and see exactly where the valve is leaking. So here we go. You should be able to see the lines around the valve now showing us exactly where the leaks are. And it turns out most of the leaks are on the bottom side of the valve behind the valve guide so it makes it a little tough to see. Well now that we've absolutely are assured that that valve is the one that's leaking up there and we uh, want to make sure that we can now hold that valve in place and work on it. First thing I need to do is find top dead center on here on this piston. And the way I'll do that is I'll take an old pencil with a, uh, an eraser on the end and I can hold it in there and I can bring this prop around until it, it pushes on the pencil there and then when it starts to go back down, right there, I know it's at top dead center. I put a piece of tape up here on the prop so I know what blade I need to be paying attention to because like I said, we don't want to drop that uh, valve down into that cylinder. So the next thing I want to do is move that piston down just a little bit by turning that and then the next thing is I'm going to put a rope uh, into the cylinder and that rope then is going to hold that uh, valve up into the valve seat so it doesn't drop down. Well, we have all of the rope now in the cylinder. We have about 30 feet of quarter inch nylon rope in there. And the, and the nice uh, thin rope will give us good packing in there. Uh, so I then raise the piston, pull it around with the prop, and pack that uh, rope up tight against the valve to keep it tight against the seat. Then I went ahead and took the uh, rocker arm off, of course, and the spring, the valve springs off, and put on our nifty little valve grinding tool here that we made. Uh, it's safety with wire, so it can't come off the end of the, uh, of the valve. We certainly don't want that to happen. So now I have a little room to work with here, a little room to play. And uh, if we look inside the spark plug hole, you can actually see the valve all the way around. It's a beautiful shot in there, and that's where we're going to put our valve grinding compound on the valve. So come in here and take a look at that. I'm turning the valve slowly so you can see it in there, but by putting light down through the exhaust stack, uh, exhaust port, we can uh, can see the valve moving in there and uh, see all the way around the valve now. It looks really quite good. There's no pitted area. I think we can uh, lap this and be successful. So the trick will be to thread the needle, get the grinding compound on there. And we uh, only want the grinding compound on the areas we want it on. We don't want it to uh, get in other places that it shouldn't be. So, that's looking good. Okay, we have our valve grinding compound on the valve that we've applied through the spark plug hole very gingerly and very carefully. We don't want that grinding compound anywhere but on the valve and the seat. It's going to be tough enough to get it off of those without putting it someplace else where it shouldn't be. So the valve is away from the seat with grinding compound on. We're now ready to uh, take our nifty little tool here and pull the valve up against the seat and grind it. Notice I've put a mark here. We're going to grind uh, a, a little bit in maybe 50 or 60 degree increments. So we'll grind it here uh, for a little bit and then we'll turn it 90 degrees and do a 40 or 50 degree uh, grind and, and turn it on around. So I'm going to pull it up against the seat. There we are. And grind. Okay, I'm going to turn it 90 degrees and 
we'll do that again. And we do that all the way around the valve. Okay, we've uh, completed the lapping process. It actually took us three times to get it to look just like we wanted it, uh, both uh, through the exhaust port and through the spark plug hole. Nice, uh, unbroken grayish line all the way around the valve. Uh, looks good. We were able to inspect part of the seat. That looks good as well. Uh, we've cleaned it as much as we can, and that's one of the secrets of doing this. You've got to get that grinding compound out of there as best you can. We think we've done a pretty good job on that. So our next move now is to bring our prop down, which I've done, uh, tighten the rope back up against the valve, and uh, holding the valve in there very, very solid. So the next move then after that is to cut the safety wire off our tool, pull our tool off, uh, put our springs on, rocker arm, uh, and then uh, actually before we put the rocker arm, we can uh, check our compression. So uh, that'll be the big test, and uh, that'll be the next move. Well, we think we uh, accomplished something here, but here comes the true test. We're going to, once again, compare the compression on what we know is a good jug with the jug that we just did. Uh, so let's do that right now. Here's, uh, here's number four, cylinder number four. It has good compression. One more time. All right, that sounds pretty good. It feels pretty good. Pressure on the prop feels about right. So now let's take a look at number three up here. This is the one we just did. And uh, I wouldn't expect it to be as strong as it will be. Uh, it will probably get better. There may be some uh, particles of grinding compound still left in there that uh, might allow it to not fully close or, or it might leak a little bit. But uh, we've done our best to clean it out. We have improved the compression and uh, we think it'll get better as the engine runs here. So let's see what, it, uh, what this one sounds like. All right, I can definitely tell a difference. So uh, with our video, here it is before. And here it is after. All right. Well, I hope you were able to uh, gain a little information uh, about lapping a valve in the engine, and uh, hope it works for you. Hope you never have to do it, but if you do, hope this technique will work. Thanks a lot, and I'll see you next time in the hangar.